It's an arms race. There's lots of apps for my iPhone that even two years after the iPad's been out, still haven't been re-released for the iPad. Yet in higher ed, we have this sense that if we didn't build it, it doesn't have a lot of value. Are we going to develop for specific devices or are we going to develop for, you know, sort of a web-centric application? So students today are using apps in all types of different ways. So they're really wanting more and more. And I think they'll see things from other schools or in apps, you know, and in different things they're doing. And they'll, they'll assume that we can and will do those for them as well. Um, we did take one side of the religious argument. Um, we've come down on web-based apps. We don't think that we have the resources, honestly, to keep up in the, the native app uh, arena. Well, I was gonna say, I think the administrator's mindset so far is that we've put a big effort into websites yeah. and they kind of think that's good enough right yeah, now. I think that. But the students are, th this younger generation of, of students are much more into their phones than, than a desktop web browser. Yeah. 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 But native applications are forking the web in many, many ways. So we have an iPhone app. Well, only people with iPhones or iOS can actually see that or use that part of the web. That's now carved out. An Android application, same thing. It also uh, places a lot of power in new hands. So for example, the, the iPhone app store has notoriously had cases of publishing or refusing certain items of content as acts as a censor. The primary things we're seeing are what you might think of as obvious. Students want to see their schedules on their mobile devices, to see um, syllabi on their mobile devices. So they want to be able to have a map of the campus on their mobile device. Those things are what I would call non-differentiating. We have now got to figure out ways to have, um, we have to have mobile applications that differentiate the experience that we're offering to our constituents. I think in higher ed we've always been in this buy versus build tug of war um, and it's had we've had slow maturity cycles I mean you look at the systems that higher ed is typically run those systems were there for a long period of time uh, we could make investments in developers and build an application and we were going to get five years six years we could do the ROI on that model I think very easily. And so we've got to look at that. We've got to look at new phones that hit every 18 months and say, are we really going to invest our staff, our development in doing that? It, it's really an argument that we had years ago in, in IT when we looked at what we could do with client server applications versus you know the web-based applications and, and where we could take advantage of the operating system and the other features of the device, I think you can make something, and I think those of us that are familiar with some of the apps that we download to our iPhones or our Droids know that they can be quite functional. A lot of campuses, I think, are, are seduced by the sexiness of having an application just for a phone. It's very, very difficult uh, at a kind of global policy level to support that. This is a very crowded marketplace, device marketplace. And while there's some obvious leaders, I think there's a lot of shaking out that needs to happen. And I think investing in the web apps is a way to preserve our options. <laughs>